Welcome to another episode of Mechanisms and Mentorship with your host, Rafael Testai, and my very special guest, Anthony Roper. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Anthony is a mechanical engineer that for eight years, he was using an inventor, a CAD package, and he transitioned over to SolidWorks. He will tell us the trade-offs between both CAD packages and the skills that he acquired in Inventor that he carried over to SolidWorks and he'll teach us. He'll model side by side and show us along the way. And at the end, we're going to talk soccer because today is the World Cup edition. United States, baby. Argentina, where I'm from. So Anthony, why don't you take it away uh, and tell us about maybe a comparison that you had. All right. So. First getting into it, um, I'm just going to do kind of like a head-to-head -head comparison with, between Inventor and SolidWorks based on my personal experience and career trajectory. Um, but before I, I dive into all that, first I, I just wanted to give just a real brief, brief background of my experience with both uh, software packages. Uh, while I was an undergrad in college, I started working for a company using SolidWorks and I was there for about four years. And then I switched over to use Inventor uh, amongst three different companies. Um, this was over the course of about eight years. Um, so basically, I had acquired SolidWorks skills um, at first. And then when I started using Inventor, I started running into roadblocks and kind of had to change my way of thinking a little bit um, away from SolidWorks because Inventor is its own unique package, its own special package. Um, Moved over to another job where I was using Creo, and then before after that, I ended up here in Phoenix. Where tell, tell us about Creo. How much do you like it? I'm mean, being honest uh, on the spot. Creo, out of the three packages, if I was comparing, um, it's probably the least of my least favorite of the three. There's a, a lot of bugs and roadblocks and difficulties when it comes to parametric modeling with Creo. We want to clarify, views are our own. We're not representing anyone. These are our own personal opinions. We expect everyone to get offended. <laughs> this is 100% from my experience, just, uh, you know, working in the industry and working in different fields. Um, and even even understanding um, companies' preferences. Most of the companies I work for prefer either SolidWorks or Inventor. Um, other companies that had Creos because they've been using it for a long time and they don't want to change uh, their system, which is understandable, but it's not my go-to. It's not my go-to personally. Got it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the comparisons. Um, and what I'm going to do, since this is a World Cup themed edition, is I'm going to be keeping score in World Cup fashion. So, so we'll, we'll keep this going. We'll see how this goes. Uh, Inventor is in a dark theme here. And this is the page that shows up when you first open it um, and versus SOLIDWORKS here when you first open it is on the lighter color. And I think you can adjust the two with settings, but um, for these purposes, I, I've kept everything uh, as installation stock as possible. So. Personally, I've never seen the interface for Inventor, so this is totally new to me. Okay. All right. So I, I guess we should be, we, should, we can begin with Inventor here. So. Opening it from um, just a UI visual aesthetics uh, standpoint, you see here it's got ribbon at the top. You see it's got um, files that you can access and then you can open up a, a new part here, right? Um, to start a new part, um, I'll just go ahead and start a new part with Inventor then I'll move over to SolidWorks so you can see the differences between the two. Um, when you start off a new part for Inventor, you get this menu here that uh, takes you through sheet metal, standard part, uh, a standard part, um, an assembly, or you can even do a weld mint. Hopping back over into SolidWorks because this is part of one of the comparisons for me is um, you know if I was coming into a, a software package not really knowing what to do, you know, first time or, or early getting into it, um, I go to open up a SolidWorks new part, which you go here. So it seems like there's a lot more clutter in Inventor when you start a, a file. Yeah, correct. As you see here, um, it opens up a... I don't know if you guys use SolidWorks before, I'm going to walk you through it as well, but you have, you have a similar thing at the top where you have ribbons with all the different features. We can assume that everyone watches, knows how to use SolidWorks, but they may have never seen Inventor before. If you haven't seen Inventor before, you're going to notice a little, you know, some similarities as far as like Extrude, uh, Revolve, um, 
around a sketch, um, you can do sweeps, uh, embossing text, um, or at least one of the important things I've learned throughout the years when it comes to modeling is the orientation that you set each part in can be very critical, or at least like if you have the orientations all matching, um, the assembly becomes much easier or like, you know, you don't have to rotate as many parts. Um, one of the things that Inventor offers that SolidWorks does not, and I'm not sure if this is like a, something that you can add on with SolidWorks or customize or something like that, but you notice this view cube on the top right here. Um, you can see where you're, you're looking at with the part. You know, I'm looking at it from the front here. I rotate it, I'm looking at it from the top. Um, I, you know, switching over to SolidWorks, you, you don't really have that. You, you know, when you want to orient it, you have to pick this and then, you know, what is, you know, you have the options here, front and top, but it's not there on the corner so you can actively see it. So I'll just go ahead and for clarity, I'll go ahead and uh, start a new part with Inventor. I've actually seen this cube feature over here with X Design. X Design? An online platform that Dissolve Systems has. Uh Profile, sketch plane, direction, distance. It makes sense to me. It makes sense yeah. to you, right? But if you're if you're doing like an apples to apples comparison, and I'm just gonna go ahead and switch back over to SolidWorks so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the user interface for Inventor. And then moving over to SolidWorks, if I go to start. Now, one of the things I like about SolidWorks is that we've got the plane here labeled front, top, and right. So there's no guessing as far as like, you know, where the view cube is and I would have, for me personally, my personal preference is going to have to be SolidWorks here because it's just a much cleaner user interface. One thing that I always wonder is why don't just CAD packages copy each other? If they see SolidWorks doing really good, why don't you just copy the entire SolidWorks interface? Is that like infringement of some kind? I, I imagine there is some sort of uh, protection or some sort of um, uh, patent that comes with uh, what they can and cannot include. Uh, the thing is that they're, they're both packages have gotten so similar throughout the years. And, and I say this because I've walked away from SolidWorks and came back to it. I walked away from Inventor and came back to it. And I got to say that Inventor has played a massive, massive catch up. A massive catch up as far as like what the package has to offer, the, the clarity of, of how everything's laid out. It's gotten a lot better and a lot more user intuitive. No, this, this, uh, go ahead. You were going to say no, something no, more. Right. This reminds me of athletic footwear. So usually like a, a brand like Adidas will come up with their, their little foam and the, the sole, whatever they call it, Adidas. What, do you know what they're called? Is it Adi Prime? Maybe that. I'm not sure. And then Nike comes up with their, their new squishy thing. Mm -hmm. And then New Balance, it's like they're all copying each other almost. It's just a, a constant battle for innovation. And, um, and, and, and that's, that's one of the things is that like, you know, from first jumping into the industry in 2008, where I had little experience with CAD, um, pretty much just had to like pick up skills and learn it along the way. Um, it, it's, it's incredible to see like how these software packages perform now. It's been a complete evolution as far as like, you know, things that users have complained about or, you know, had comments on that these packages have just corrected over the years. Um, part of the difficulty of this whole comparison uh, as I was going through it was, you know, roadblocks that I was running into back in like 2013 with Inventor have all been solved now. So when I was looking at this, I was like, I used to not be able to do that in Inventor, but now I can. So that's why I was like, you know, trying to get a little bit more nitty gritty and focusing on what works for me versus what works for something else, you know. One thing about me is the last thing I want to do is learn another CAD package. Like I want to get better as an engineer and not have to learn so much how to use the tools. Mm -hmm. So if I invested countless hours, maybe 10,000 hours by now learning SolarWorks, I want SolarWorks to be the leading industry software so I don't have to learn another one. So that's my, my honest uh, take on that. Um, where am I going with this? Let me think. <laughs> okay. So when the if there are other CAD packages that catch up to SolarWorks, what can SolarWorks do to continue to have to be head and shoulders from the rest? That's a, that's a great question. Um, and you know, I say that because like, you know, when it comes to technology, you know, it's, it's hard for me to envision like what the next step is. Like every time they come out with like a new gaming system, I'm always like, wow, it can't get any better than this. Or they come out with like these new thin TVs that practically weigh nothing. It's like, wow, it can't get any better than this. 
And then what happens with innovation in time? It gets better somehow. And it's kind of funny because like the only way to really see how far you've come is really to just look back at what you've been working with. This probably would have been a lot more of a beneficial comparison if I had Inventor 2013. And I was like, these are the roadblocks I used to run into and this is what they've improved between now and then. Does that make sense? I think that one thing that cat packages could work on, because I'm all, I, I have the mind of an inventor and entrepreneur, mm -hmm. is to solve what are the problems that the industry is currently facing. And we had a team meeting here at Team Pipeline, where we are right now. This is the Team Pipeline podcast. What do we do at Team Pipeline? Uh, pipeline Design and Engineering. We design automated equipment for customers who, for whatever needs that they need, whether it's medical device or automation for processes and everything like that. Um, make very customized uh, solutions for your customers that need them. So we have this awesome, awesome description. We had this weekly meeting in which uh, we call it lessons learned. So we share with the rest of the team something that we learned. I think that creates a good company culture and it makes us feel safe. It's okay to make mistakes. And the person had mentioned that they had worked on a previous project in some other company and they had to actually create and 3D print the prototypes to show the customer and immediately, as the customer held the prototype in their hand, they were like, oh, no good. And they were like, well, customer, we showed you the CAD model like last week, and you can see everything you see here in your, in your hand on the screen. What was the difference? And the, the customer just couldn't explain it. So uh, my hypothesis is that it has to do something with spatial awareness. People that don't use CAD every day like we do, they may not have the spatial awareness we have. So how can we give a customer spatial awareness without having to invest the resources into 3D printing it? So it takes me to what do you call it, VR? Mm -hmm. Virtual reality in real size. I think that could be the, the next step that could give a cat package an edge over another cat package. It's a, it's a great point. Direction because SolidWorks was so easy to use. It's just a much more user-friendly, um, intuitive approach to modeling as far as Inventor, I felt like there was a lot of stuff that I had to figure out and navigate my way through. So as promised, we're going to talk soccer. World Cup 2022 is right around the corner. So Anthony, what are your top five players right now? Starting off with Erling Haaland, plenty of career left. I'd like to highlight that. Anthony, if you want to show the camera, you got your notes out here. He came prepared with his top five. You want to show him? Take out your notebook. I did, I did. <laughs> this is a little got, cheat sheet he's got going on. Yeah, Erling Haaland's the best player because... He's just scoring goals left and right. It's Robert Lewandowski, playing for Barcelona. He just switched over from Bayern Munich. Next player is Karim Benzema. Uh, for, he plays for Real Madrid. He also plays for France. So who will not escape my top five list because he is my favorite player of all time. Um, and it's, it's because it's uh, the player I've watched in my generation. We're very close to age, but Lionel Messi is my next player I pick. Yes, yeah, Vinicius Jr plays for Real Madrid in Brazil. Um, it, watching him play is like watching a nonstop highlight reel. He's always doing step overs. He's always you know, trying to do a rainbow kick over somebody. Um, <laughs> I'd like to actually know, uh, Raf, uh, who are your top five players of all time? I actually asked him, I told him to ask me this question all the time because I'm better of all the time. So before I list my top five, thanks for asking. I'm gonna list two honorable mentions. Okay. Number one, Roberto Carlos for Brazil. Uh, Roberto Carlos, uh, when I was growing up in Argentina, he used to do this out of balance pass. They used to do a flip. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Surreal. <laughs> I never tried it. I didn't want to kill myself. Uh, the other honorable mention, uh, we have Ronaldo, but the original Ronaldo oh, from yes. Brazil, the number nine, the chubby one. <laughs> like, he used to score so much. <laughs> so those are my two honorable mentions. Now into my top five. These are in order. So number one is going to be my favorite all the time. Ibrahimovic. I just like everything about him. His confidence, uh, that he just believes in himself so much. Yeah, number four, Martin Palermo. Oh, yes. You heard of Martin Palermo? I have heard well, of Palermo. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Probably one of the first, my top three players of my childhood growing up that I knew who this guy was because everybody at school when I was eight or nine years old had this little hair, like this blonde strip. Everybody, Martin Palermo started that. Yep, nice. So coming in at number three, many people will be surprised. Messi. Number two, Batistuta. Batigol. Yeah, well, I can't believe you knew who this was. 
Anthony had asked me, who's your top five? Like before the interview started, I was like, I want to capture your real reactions mm -hmm. in live. So you know who Batistuta is? Batigol, yes. Batigol. Batigol. Yes. That's my dad's, my father's favorite player. Oh, he's incredible. This player's tenacity is something that I haven't seen ever before in any other player. Tevez. Carlos Tevez. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a very surprising pick for me because I, you know, you'll, you'll ask any soccer player and I, I guarantee you most of the responses would never be Tevez, but I can totally understand why you're coming for that because uh, that's a guy who, no matter what team he was playing in, no matter what environment he was playing in, he was there to score and he was there to win. What I loved about Tevez is when the defense had possession of the ball, he would chase the defenders everywhere to put constant pressure. Mm -hmm. And when he stole it, he's scoring every time. So I love that about him. It's a great choice. Thank you. Great choice. <laughs> and you stayed, you stayed uh, true to the, to, the, to the colors too. Argentina. Yeah, stay true yeah. to Argentina. There you go. Anything else that we want to say about soccer before we wrap it up? I'm just, you know, hoping that one day the United States will have some players on that list, you know. Um, it's still a young program, still got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, catching up to do as far as the other superpowers in the world, but um, that's the hope for it someday. What's your background then? Where are your parents from? So my dad is from Jamaica and my mom is from Panama. Um, those are two countries that did not make it to the World Cup. But I was born here in the United States, so I'm always going to root for the United States, no matter how difficult it gets, no matter how stressful some of the games it get, or how heartbreaking the, the World Cup exits are. I still support the team, I still love them, and I have faith that hopefully one day we can just surprise everybody and sneak our way in, you know? Who's the best U.S. soccer player of all time? Best soccer player of all time for the U.S.? I would have to go with Clint Dempsey. Uh, and I say that because not only did he have success domestically, but he also had a lot of success in the club. He was one of the first players to go play in the Premier League and he was scoring very successfully for Fulham. So um, still a young history in the club, but amazing player. Who do you think is gonna win World Cup 2022? Oh, on the spot, on the spot. Uh, it's a tough one, but and, and I really hate to do this because you're wearing an Argentina jersey. Uh, I, I think Brazil might have a good chance. I yeah. think they might have a good chance. After yeah. their embarrassing exit. After, <laughs> after losing the, the Copa America final uh, to Argentina. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if that, that... We're no longer, we don't like it. We're no longer friends. It's over. It's, it's over. over. <laughs> Delete my number from your phone. It's over. <laughs> What, what is it about Brazil? Who do they have? Why are they good? Oh, they just have an embarrassment of riches to pick from as far as like defenders, midfielders. I mean, they, they're playing for all these clubs. And, and you know what? That may be the reason why they don't make it because it's going to be hard to pick from such a large talent pool to pick the most consistent 11. Um, it's it's going to be a challenge. It, yeah. Who's Brazil's best player right now? Neymar. Second best player. Uh, oh, wait, no, I said Vinicius earlier, so it's, it's Vinicius 1 and okay. then Neymar 2. Okay, yeah. right on. Yeah. Well, I think Argentina's going to win. You think Argentina's going to win? Yeah. There you go. You know, that's going to set up a good, uh, a good uh, as far as like, well, I'm not rooting for Brazil. If, if, if I was rooting for a team, I'd root for Argentina over Brazil. I'm not just saying that because you're wearing Argentina. I just <laughs> fundamentally like how Argentina plays football. It's, it's a very balanced, very controlling type of play. We, we call it football now. Complete yeah, football, football, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've changed it from soccer to football. Yes. Well, I hope that our audience caught on to that. There you go. <laughs> well, fantastic. Well, thank you for so much for being on the show. I appreciate you having me here.